In video number two of this series, we're going to discuss what we have to do to make the speaker the correct width to completely fill the shell and shim it out. First, I'm going to get some wax paper on my uh, cutting mat so that I, if I spill some glue, it doesn't mess up the mat. Quickly assemble the parts and supplies. Next, I'm going to measure the length of the speaker and cut some strips of white styrene uh, to the dimension of the speaker. The same method that I used in video number one. Now, uh, what I've done here is I've got a couple of different sizes of styrene. One size I'm going to use for a shim and one size I'm going to use uh, for a riser for the speaker. But they all need to be the same length as the speaker, so we'll quickly cut those and be ready to go. Now, first thing we're going to do is to glue standoffs on the bottom of the speaker. These can be fairly wide. Uh, in fact, they can even cover the holes uh, and keep the audio from going around the speaker. Now that we have one side on, we're going to turn the speaker around, check it, make sure that there's no glue on the cone, then turn it around and glue the other side. And I use the blocks just to make sure that everything lines up and that it's square. Put the piece of styrene in place, and then a quick tack with MEK, which works very well between styrene and the speakers. There we go. We got it held down, just a little drop, and capillary action will suck it along the length of the speaker. Give it that a few seconds to set up. Now the next step is going to be to figure out what we have to do to make the speaker wide enough to fit in the shell. We measure the speaker width and zero the calipers on that. Then when we measure the shell width, the difference in those, or about 20 thousandths, is how wide we have to have the shim. Well, I just happen to have some 20 thousandths thick material cut, so we'll glue one piece onto one side of the speaker. The magnet will loosely hold the speaker against these L blocks, but it's always nice to have a solid one underneath. What I'll do is I'll position the shim in place and again use MEK with its capillary action and quick drying capabilities to hold that piece of styrene in place. When it dries a bit, we'll check it to make sure that it fits. Look at that. 